So what is one to do when their precious tool of death gets banged up? Fuck all, just sulk about it. That's Rosemary's advice. It's not like she has both a protege mage and an ultra talented blacksmith right there beside her. No siree, it's better to do absolutely nothing instead of asking for help. You stupid, worthless, cotton candy brained Muppet. And these two aren't any better. Why don't either of them offer to fix the sword? It's not even a question of whether or not they could actually do it in the end. It's just what friends do. You see your friend in trouble, and you do anything in your power to help them. They can both clearly see how broken Rosemary is about the whole thing. Sage could try to whip up some sort of fixer-upper spell. And we've literally seen Parsley create daggers out of nothing by banging her hammer twice. Clearly she has some kind of magical prowess of her own. They both literally have a free period right now. Why don't they make helping Rosemary their everything hours project? At least for the day. Both of them are either morons, or they are being real bad friends here. On the other hand, maybe they are both just salty about the whole... I've ruined the one thing that matters to me. But that's par for the course. Common sense, logical plot structure, and characterization can all go hump a cactus. You see? The episode has other priorities in mind. Beep, beep. The savior for Rosemary's woes suddenly arrives to the frame out of nowhere in the form of Professor Caraway. Now honestly, who struts around randomly while reading a book? You can't see where you are going if you focus on the text, and you cannot focus on absorbing the information if you are forced to constantly mind your surroundings. This is not something a normal person does. This is fake. It's posing. It's something one does when they wish to appear deeper and more intellectual to the people around them. When a person of true intellect wants to immerse themselves in a text, they do so alone, at peace, at their own dwelling, Somewhere where they know they won't be bothered. Someone who is truly confident in themselves and their mind has no need to flaunt their supposed erudition in the presence of others in this kind of empty manner. Reading a book is not supposed to be a performative act, unless you are making an audiobook, but that's a whole another thing. Caraway shit is the same kind of posturing as all those booktubers and other adjacent reviewers who film themselves in front of a stacked bookcase in a pathetic attempt to seem more professional. As in, look how much I read, ooh, I know my stuff. Yeah, no, you are the same dumpster brain spewing worthless nonsense as anyone else. Clearly, your wealth of experience hasn't affected your intelligence or taste in any way. In reality, we never see Caraway giving any proper lessons to the students. What little he ever says is either something childishly elementary or just utterly incomprehensible. He has no wisdom to impart, not in the classroom, nor outside. Basic platitudes and nonsense babble is the best we get. Everyone's a little bit shy, it's the first day. I've been there. But you've got to be brave if you want to be a guardian. Like me. <laughs> I trust you're having a glorious day. Depends on what you consider glorious. So many things. The way life gifts us with changes. New seasons, new friends, new grogs. <laughs> oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead a whole lot here, but I wanna show you this one clip in particular. To showcase just how utterly incompetent Caraway is at his job. So in the final episode of this travesty, we have our main villain disguising himself as Caraway. The details aren't important, so let's just roll with it. The real Caraway struts in, sees the double ganger, and what does he do? Does he whip out his wand and incapacitate the threat with a quick spell? Of course not! 
because that would make sense. Instead, he runs up to the villain and starts tussling with him, so that the girls get confused about which of them is which, and we end up with a Mexican standoff. How the hell does an experienced warrior mage screw up this badly? You are a long-ranged fighter. Why the fuck are you running at your opponent to have a fist fight? You impulsive, dumbass child. And his reaction to the villain casting his own spell is equal to that of a snail on sedatives. Oh yeah, sure, just let your opponent knock down and possibly kill one of your students. Lucky this was apparently a non-lethal spell. Even though the villain's one and only goal here is to kill everyone in the room and... And I'm digressing. I fucking hate this show. Let's back up to the topic at hand. I'll deal with this shit later. Who wrote this? And were they high on spice? This is literally the only time in the entire show Caraway has a chance to showcase his skill and experience in action. And this is what we end up with. What an absolute cretin. The creator's intent behind Caraway is clear. He is supposed to be a highly learned Archmage, a respected instructor in this esteemed academy for warrior heroes, a cerebral and approachable shoulder to lean on for the students, a wise and admirable, inspirational figure, a real teacher of the year type. That much is obvious, but it doesn't matter what the writers are going for, or what their intent is for the character. Execution is everything. You cannot just claim that your character is proficient, or smart, or witty. It needs to be shown, it needs to be palpable, and it needs to be consistent. It is the writer's job to convince me, the audience. It's the same thing as with the Spice Girls. The writers would claim they are such good friends, but half the time their conduct is completely against that notion. The borderline indifference they show towards Rosemary in her moment of sorrow, even though they literally have nothing better to do at the moment, whilst holding all the power to fix things. Rosemary, find us after. We'll fix this. Miss you. Love you. See you so soon. Bye, bitch! This is not how friends act. The girls are bad at being friends, Caraway is bad at being a teacher, or a functional adult for that matter. And yet, the story never calls any of them out for it. The character's failings aren't treated as flaws, that's the crux of the issue. The script is so horrendous that the depiction of the entire cast ends up being a jumbled mess. Caraway is a phony, that's his actual portrayal on screen. Instead of true wisdom or skill, he has props, smoke and mirrors to fool the people around him. The only reason someone like him isn't called out for his horseshit is that everyone else in the show's universe is apparently even dumber than he is. He wears the skin of a teacher, an intellectual, of an adult without actually being any of those. He is a person who likes to pretend they are something they are not. Much like the creators of this show. I'd like to thank everyone for sticking around and listening to these rants. All the comments and kudos are much appreciated. And if you haven't already, consider drop kicking the like button and subscribing for more. Most of the people watching these videos aren't subscribed, so... You know, the button is right there, it'll only take a second. And a very special thanks goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thank you to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you'd like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.